Welcome to this video. In this video, I would like to talk about SAP simplification list. So if you plan to migrate from SAP ECC to SAP S4HANA or from SAP S4HANA to a newer version of SAP S4HANA, then the SAP simplification list is the tool, the document that lists all of the relevant changes due to a upgrade or migration. And that's why I would like to highlight SAP simplification list in detail within this video. So directly, let's get started. So first of all as i've told you this is a must have for every sap s4 hana migration so in this video first of all i would like to talk about an explanation so i would talk about what is the sap simplification list and then i would like to explain why it is so important and then last but not least i would like to show you how you can access the sap simplification list and how um, you can read it what is really important about this so basically what is the sap simplification list as i've told you the sap simplification list is the central sap document for a migration from sap ecc to sap s4 hana or from a newer version uh, of sap s4 hana if you have a lower or an older version of sap s4 hana within the sap simplification list all of the technical and functional changes deprecations and innovations will be listed and explained in detail most of the times um, there is a link, a reference to an SAP node explaining you in detail a specific change. And especially if you're an IT architect, a consultant or a project lead, this is, the, this is your document that you should read and that you should understand because most of the time these target groups will um, use the SAP simplification list and yeah, use the mentioned corrections and changes due to the migration or upgrade. Then what is all listed? So what is the content of an SAP simplification list? So most of the times, especially if you're moving from SAP ECC to SAP S4HANA, a lot of transactions, tables, data elements and so on are obsolete, are outdated and these objects have been removed so this is important if you migrate then maybe you have to to adapt your coding as well you have to um, adapt your process as well you have to learn new structures and so on so um, all of the transactions or tables um, that are removed are listed of course, um, the replaced, so the new objects are also mentioned. And um, if there's a shift to new SAP modules, then this will also be explained. And as mentioned, if there are any changes to data structures, the business logic, you will also find this in here. Um, the typical entry includes, this will we'll see later on when I would like to show you an example of an SAP simplification list, title and ID, a change description, the business impact, recommended actions technical details and most of the times a reference to an sap note so why is an sap simplification list so important i've um, described it a little bit earlier so first of all it has a planning reliability so within the sap simplification list you can identify the relevant changes early so earlier before you migrate before maybe you have to adapt your coding you adapt your business logic so before migrating then you make sure that after migration uh, it still works so risk reduction, of course, you avoid potential show stoppers. So I think it's it's better to prevent something uh, worse being happening um, um, before it really happens. So before you migrate and then it doesn't work and then you have to immediately find a solution for this rather early, identify these risks and find a solution for this. 
Um, regarding the migration strategy, it's the basis for the fit gap analysis and workshops. So there you can, um, with your customer, with your SAP system, you can um, discuss about potential solutions. And it, this is really important for estimations for the project effort. So there you can see if there are more or less required changes. And compliance and clean core. So you identify legacy code and unsupported functions. And as I told you, you then can um, correct it. You can make a, um, a, a check, a SAP readiness check before migrating and remove the unwanted code, unwanted logic and so on. So now what is really important is how to use it in projects. So for example, with the XK01, so this is in SAP SCC, especially the transaction to create the vendor master data, uh, also the S uh, XK02 for uh, changing and XK03 for displaying on those transactions and more of them have been replaced by the B P, the business partner transaction. So this is the central transaction. And within the SAP simplification list, you can see the change, also the technical details and what is recommended. Um, most of the times a simplification list is a PDF or an HTML in the SAP help portal or launchpad. And as I told you, you can use it for workshops and so on. And most of the time for an SAP readiness check. And there you have most of the checks also built in where you can run a program to check if your SAP system is ready for an upgrade or if you have to do some mandatory actions. So now I've talked a lot about the SAP simplification list directly um, let's get started let's show it to you so as i've told you you have to go to help.sap.com then you will um, land in here and here you can easily enter sap simplification list and then based on the results all of the simplification lists will be listed and then of course you have to make sure to um, read and to access the simplification list regarding your sap s for hana version so especially sap simplification list for sap s for hana 2023 then you can see this pdf document and here you can see um, some uh, within the table of contents Content. you can see what is in and what exactly has been changed in here so a lot especially table of contents um, have has a lot of pages so here you can see that there are quite a lot of changes in here and especially if you for example just open up once so here you have um, the, the title you have the um, reference to the application component what kind of sap nodes are relevant and if you click on one sap node then you will land in the corresponding sap node where you can see once again um, what is relevant um, what you have to do from the technical side um, here you can see uh, really nice descriptions and yeah, that's that's um, that's how it is being structured. And as I've told you, if, if you, for example, have the XK01, so here you can see that this has this change has been made from SPS for HANA 1610. So let's open this up and then here you can see all of the obsolete transactions that are no longer available, especially here the mentioned transaction for the um, vendor master data, um, but also for, um, for other transactions. So um, what you have to do and um, yeah, this is uh, how it's being structured basically. So you should definitely have a close look, explore it. And yeah, if you have any questions left, please put them in the comment sections. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.